Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 28th of October 2024. We have taken articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. So let's look into the list of articles for today's discussion. In this first article, we'll be seeing about OSR land from the prelims perspective. And in the second article, we'll be seeing about stubble burning. And in the third article, we'll be seeing about UNESCO tag. We'll be seeing all these articles in the prelims perspective. So without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about dinosaur fossil park and museum in the village Rayoli in Gujarat's Balasinaur Taluk. So the news is that our Geological Survey of India has visited this particular site, but due to low maintenance, the site has been deteriorated. The article states that if this place is well maintained, then it can even get UNESCO's Geo Heritage Tag. So let us revise about what is this Geo Heritage Tag from the prelims perspective. So let's start with what is this Geo Heritage Tag. See, it is a designation award to area of significant geological, environmental and cultural importance. And it is part of UNESCO's Global Geopark Network under the International Geoscience and Geopark Program, in short called as IGGP. So the site that has been selected under this program will be receiving the designation and will be known as the UNESCO Global Geopark. So it is nothing but a site that is recognized for its geological and cultural importance. Okay. Now let us quickly go through the process involved in this process. See the first process is identification and nomination. This is done by the local authority or the geological body in that particular country. So in our country, uh, Geological Survey of India, GSI takes care of this particular thing. So they prepare a detailed report of the site, which includes the details of geological features of the site, then the cultural and historical significance and the conservation strategies. So this report, it will be sent to evaluation to the UNESCO experts. These experts, they will analyze the report and they will be visiting the site for verification. So after verification, they will be providing approval or providing the status for initially for four years. Even after this four years, there will be a verification process so that this status will be extended beyond. A very good example for this geo heritage site that has been given recently is this Zangi National Geopark. It is in China. It has been recognized for its geological significance. You can see the colorful image given here. So this is about the process involved in providing UNESCO Geo Heritage Tag. Now let us see what are all the advantages and disadvantages of providing this UNESCO Geo Heritage Tag. See the first thing is it will increase tourism and secondly it will provide a global recognition and thirdly it will provide conservation support from the state as well as from the national level as well as from the global level and finally a lot of education and research opportunities will be provided to education so this will lead to further development of the particular site leading to new discoveries and innovations so these are all the advantage of providing unesco geo heritage tag to a particular site now talking about the disadvantages firstly it will lead to increased footfall which means it can even deteriorate the significant cultural aspect of that particular site secondly the maintenance cost will be very high meaning we have to provide fund frequently to maintain this particular site thirdly it may lead to local displacement due to the incoming of many tourists this can even lead to development of many other recreational activities leading to displacement of these local people and finally it can lead to economical dependency on tourist which can even affect the local economy in the larger picture so these are all certain disadvantages of providing unesco geo heritage tag to a particular site so so far we saw about what is this unesco geo heritage tag how it is provided we saw what are all the advantages and disadvantages involved in providing the status to that particular site now with this information let us try to solve a prelims practice question here the correct answer for the particular question is option b first lunar lake it is volcanic crater lake and option b bimbetka it is a prehistoric rock art and saint mary's island it is a columnar ballast formation and the uh, akal fossil wood park it is a 
fossilized wood and tree trunks. So, the correct answer here is option B. So, with this information, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this news article. This news article talks about OSR land. Here, the OSR is nothing but open space reservation land. Currently, Chennai Urban Local Body has decided to increase the number of this OSR land in order to save the rainwater and curb flooding. So, this is what the news article is about. So, in this news article discussion, let us revise about OSR land from the prelims perspective. Firstly, what is this OSR land? See, this open reservation land or open space land is nothing but a designated area in urban planning, primarily for green areas. So, the green area might include playgrounds, parks and even recreational areas. There are certain criteria for this OSR development. Let us see that one by one. See, the first thing is the area that is being developed as OSR land should be at least 10 percentage of the total area. So, if a particular settlement is taken, this OSR land should be at least 10 percentage of that land. Then only we can develop this particular land area and it should be accessible to residents and it should be located centrally. So, it cannot be in any corner of a particular settlement. If it is in the middle, it will be accessible to all the local people to this particular area. So, the location specification is very important. Thirdly, the region should be able to adopt all the trees grass cover to maintain the biodiversity. So, by bringing in the biodiversity, we can even maintain the pollinators and uh, naturally bringing in the air purification, reducing the pollution and many aspects of green development. And there should be no building zone, meaning there should be no any permanent construction allowed in this OSR land. And it should be compliant with the local regulation, especially the developers must follow the specific guidelines to develop this particular OSR land. So, these are all the very important criteria that you have to remember in, when it comes to OSR land. Now, let us see about the advantages of this particular OSR land development. See, firstly, it improves the quality of life. So, when there is a crowded settlement and when there is a particular recreational region provided in this particular settlement, it will lead to improved air quality, improved quality of life itself. Secondly, it leads to a lot of environmental benefits like purifying the air, mitigate pollution and support the ecological balance. Apart from this, it can also store a lot of rainwater leading to recharge of the groundwater and reducing the flood impacts in the urban area. Apart from this, it also reduces the urban heat by adding a lot of greenery and reducing the temperature and it promotes biodiversity and adds a aesthetic value to the urban region. So, these are all certain advantages with OSR land. However, there are certain disadvantages. For example, firstly, there is land use restriction as I said earlier the area will not be available for commercial or residential development. It will be dedicated exclusively for the recreational purpose. Secondly, the maintenance cost is very high. We have to even impose a new tax to maintain this particular area or we have to bring in entry fee to maintain the area. So, there are certain restrictions like that and there is a risk of encroachment as well. This land can be prone to illegal encroachment or unauthorized use which needs regulation time to time. Apart from this, there is also a potential for neglect. People might not visit the region leading to unsuccessful development as well. So, these are all certain disadvantages of this OSR land. So, so far we saw what is this OSR when we saw about the criteria for which the OSR can be brought in. Then we saw some of the advantages and disadvantages of this. Now, with this understanding, let us try to solve a prelims question. Now, look at this question with reference to OSR land in urban planning. Consider the following statement. OSR land is primarily designed for residential building and commercial complexes. Second statement says a certain percentage of land in large scale urban development project must be allocated as OSR for public use. Third statement says OSR land development can include essential amenities like benches or playground equipments. So, what is the correct answer here? Here, the correct answer is option B, 1 and 3, 1B because obviously statement 1 is incorrect and if you can 
eliminate only one option, you can directly arrive at the answer, which is option B213 only. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about stubble burning. The news is that the incidence of stubble burning has been declined in Punjab and Haryana. In Punjab, it has declined to 35 percentage and in Haryana, it has declined to 21 percentage when compared to the 2023 figures. So, this is what the news is about. Now, in the present perspective, let us revise about stubble burning. So, what is this stubble burning in the first place? See, stubble burning is nothing but an agricultural practice of setting fire to the leftover crop residue or stubble. So, whenever a crop is planted and harvested, the remaining leftover in the field is known as the stubble. So, this stubble is burnt for a lot of reasons. Firstly, to prepare the uh, land for the next cultivation for the next crop rotation. For this purpose, this stubble is actually burnt. Secondly, it is seen as a cost effective method. Thirdly, there is no alternative in the market to turn this resource into a useful product. So, these are the reasons why farmers, they burn the stubble in their field. And this is very common in states with higher cultivation of rice and wheat, especially Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Now, even though this is a cost effective method. There are a lot of impacts that is unseen or unnoticed. Let us see them one by one. Firstly, the increase in air pollution. See, this stubble burning absolutely will release a lot of particulate matter. So, this indirectly increases greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and leading to increase in temperature in the area and the surrounding. So, secondly, it causes a lot of health care issues particularly the pulmonary and cardiovascular problems. So, thirdly, we have the soil degradation. See, when these residues are burnt in the field, they actually leads to root nutrient and the microorganisms. So, this ultimately lead to soil degradation and can impact the next crop circulation. Apart from this, it has a lot of economic cost due to the increase in healthcare expenses and reduced yield and it can also contribute to the climate change leading to temperature fluctuations, change in weather patterns and agriculture. So, these are all certain impacts of stubble burning. However, there are certain alternatives to stubble burning that are not aware of. The first thing is the happy cedar. This is a machine that actually plant seeds without removing the crop residue. You can see the image of happy cedar. So, this is actually seen as a very good alternative instead of burning the stubbles. Now, this stubble will also be acting as a nutrient provider. Secondly, the rotavator. Here you can see how the rotavator actually looks like. So, this will mix the stubble back into the soil leading to enhanced soil fertility. So, the next crop rotation will also get the essential nutrients that it has to get from this stubble. Thirdly, we have to say about the bio decomposers. These are capsules. You can see here the capsules. So, they actually decompose they actually accelerate the decomposition. So, a very good example for this bio decomposer is PUSA. Here you can see that. Fourthly, boiling and biomass collection. Here you can see how boiling is done. This boiling can be used as a fodder and it can be used as a raw material to generate biofuels as well. Apart from this, there are certain other techniques like using mulching. Here the crop residue will be added as a protective layer over the soil in order to grow the next crop. And there are also certain initiatives to generate awareness about this particular alternatives that is present in the market. There are even educational programs to promote sustainable practices when it comes to stubble burning. So, these are all the alternatives to stubble burning and this is the reason why that has been reduced in the, in the, in the incidence of stubble burning in the states that we saw earlier in the news. So, so far we saw what is this stubble burning, then we saw what are all the impacts of it and what are all the alternatives that are, that is present in the market for this stubble burning. So, with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.